So Daniel. Hi. It's me, Baxter. It's me, Daniel. Good to see you. Hey, everybody, this is Daniel Klein from um, Port City Amps. So he is one of our favorite North Carolina amp builders, and we've, we've lured him down with... Um, with the help of Kevin. Yes, Kevin. It's a big shout out, Kevin. But we didn't... He, yeah, I guess Kevin was a big part of this. Kevin, oh, Kevin, thanks, Kevin. Anyway, yeah. we lured him down with um, some fancy Chinese food. Yeah. Sort of, and um, talking about amps and stuff. And I just want to like, sort of dig into like just having fun with the world of amplifiers, mm -hmm. the world of being a strange builder of amplifiers. Yeah, there's lots of bu strange builders. And, well, and, but it's the world and what you actually do, like your job. Like you know, I know you sure. build amps, but you got to sell them too. Yeah. And you got you to get parts to put these things together. You even let us take one apart, which is really cool. So we can look at it. You got to see inside of it, and it's really pretty. Because some amps are not pretty. They sell it as pretty, and it's not pretty inside. But um. So tell us a little bit about Port City. What's the inspiration there? Um, well, I was a professional musician for, for many, many years. Um, I got tired of riding around in buses and vans that smelled like socks, farts, and weed. And uh, so I decided I would do something else and went to work for a company called Mojo Musical Supply. And uh, I love those guys. That was, it was interesting because at the time, internet sales hadn't really come into a lot. Um, so a lot of the builders were calling in and placing their orders. So you have these world-renowned builders that are on the phone, and I want this and this, and I just talked to them like, okay, so why are you doing that with this filter cap? You know, like what, why specifically this brand, this tolerance? That's smart. And so like I just kind of extracted a lot of information from these guys um, who were really, really generous with their time and their, their knowledge. And so uh, worked there for about two years and just went out on my own. And... Um, never looked back. So we started off with um, an AA-165 clone. That was our first amp called the Dual 50. It was, it was pretty neat. We enjoyed that. Um, and then I'd kind of wrestled back and forth between open back and closed back cabinets. And I realized there had to be a better solution. So well, we, that's the thing is like your, your cabinets and your speakers are so integral with the design of what this all is. Absolutely. So our, our wave cabinet design is completely proprietary. It was uh, provided a U.S. patent. Um, so we got it. And we've had three people try to reverse engineer what we do, and we've shut each and every single one. No of way, them. really? Yeah, that's yeah. kind of cool. You're like a little small Gibson and Fender, then. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm got not going to comment on that. So, <laughs> um, but yeah. So uh, we, you know, our 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 cabinet design definitely forged us ahead within the boutique market because you have guys like from Brad, Brad Paisley to Zach Brown to, you know, between the buried and me. So everyone oh, right loves on. the wave cabinet design because it just really, um, it harnesses everything that your speaker is producing. Well, just about the wave cabinet design mm -hmm. for me, what is so special about it sonically? Cause I noticed a little bit of a, I don't want to call it the swirl, but there was something happening in that respect. Kind of like when I play, an old basement, it has that sort of sound. Yeah, um, so if we were to, to take a look at this cabinet, this is a 2 by 12 OS vertical cabinet. So what we've done is in the back of this cabinet, there's a 45 degree angle sound deflecting panel, okay? Uh, and then on the bottom, there's another 45 degree angle sound deflecting panel. So everything that's produced from the rear of the speaker is channeled down and then to the front. And then if you can maybe put in a picture of that that port that runs the width of the cabinet. Well, inside that port is a ramp that's on a 21 degree angle. So it gets those frequencies up off of the ground and then it mixes with the sound frequencies from the front of the speaker. That's fascinating. That, that is With cool. minimal phase canceling. And that's just old fashioned design. There's yeah. No, there's no computers there. Nope. That, that's really cool. Um, we like that. We're sort of analog because of, um, not because of choice, just because we're not very smart here. Okay, so I'll you know, relate to that, sure. Thank you very much. Um, so you're, you were based in Wilmington. Wilmington, yeah, yeah. And then we, um, due to some personal situations, we needed to, to move. And so we, um, we eventually found ourselves in Asheville. And so we're four minutes away from Blue Ridge Parkway and it's just awesome. And Fashion. so it's, it's great. You know, I've got a wonderful wife, a kid, two dogs and a pig. So we, uh, it, it's pretty neat. What is wrong with these people with pigs? I don't understand. We, we inherited a pig. Okay. So it's, its name is George, and everyone who comes to the shop can meet George. He's not the most gracious pig, but he's everyone entertaining. Everyone I meet with pigs are a little bit funny. Yeah. So um, you've got a bunch of amps. Yeah. You know, and I, and I, and I'm sort of plus the combos with the heads. There's like seven or so mm -hmm. Like when you sort of break it down. What was the, the foundation? Like you have some sort of Harvard 
clones or not, not clones, but harbor DNA, I would say. Right. Yeah. So that's the Merino amp right here. Um, so we, um, I, I've had the opportunity to become good friends with a guy named Rene Martinez, who happens to have been Steve Ray Vaughn's guitar tech, Carlos Santana's guitar tech, and most recently John Mayer's guitar tech, but he recently retired. He was having some some health issues. Right. Um, but Rene and I, we're, we had, we'd known each other for years, um, and we were backstage one time on the Mayer tour, and I said, uh, Rene, what is the best sounding amp you've ever heard? And I thought he was going to tell me one of, you know, the Dumbles from either Stevie the or... Super. Yeah. And he was like, oh, easy. It was a Fender Harvard. And I was like, get out of here. He says, you put a certain type of speaker with that amp, he says, it's, it's the best. That's I was cool. like, no way. And he, the, the, the kind of got the juices flowing. And um, after the tour was over, he contacted me and said, hey, man, remember that conversation we had about that Fender Harvard? I said, yeah. He says, can you build me one? I said, sure, you know? So I built it for him, sent it out to him. He loves it. You can actually see a YouTube video of him playing it. Um, but that really got the idea for the, the Harvard because there's some really unique things in there. It's, it's Tweed Deluxe mainly gets that kind of focus for that style and genre of amp of that era. Right. But the Harvard, I think, is really unique um, in, in its tonality, its responsiveness, uh, how it really... Um, Man, the dynamics of that are really cool. But as with all of the older designs, or most of the designs, there are some definite improvements that can be made looking back on the past 50 years of, or 70 years of technology. Look, I'm a Harvard junkie. I love the Harvard amp. It's oh, a, yeah, they're great. It's a great amp, and they're hard to find. They used to be so affordable. Yeah. The vintage ones, and now they're outrageous. Yeah, it's especially like since um, like the Black Keys, they kind of spilled the beans, and once that cat was out of the bag. Like it was just hungry, hungry hippos to get them. Well, and, and like not just jump and ship from your amps, but like you, and I, we don't have to say names, but you've, you've built for some pretty successful musicians along the way too. Sure, yeah. I mean, we've got some, if you take a look at our artist um, page on our website, it, it's pretty expansive. Um, recently did a uh, collaboration with the amazing Kurt Rosenwinkle, and that produced this amp right here called the Hardcore. Um, he has a record label, Kurt does, uh, called Hardcore Records. And so, um, should I get into the story of this? Yeah, let's talk about this amp right here because it's fun to look at. I'm going to demo this one too, and all of them. Okay. So stay tuned on the Casino cool. Guitars channel. All right, so back in 2012, Kurt reached out and wanted to have, um, he had used uh, one of our amps called the Pearl, which is our kind of flagship. We've had it for almost 14 years now. It's Crazy. definitely our bestseller. Um, he had recorded the entire album Stars of Jupiter with the Pearl. In fact, he said it in the liner notes. This, amp, this record was recorded with Port City Pearl. Um, and then he was coming to the Village Vanguard um, and he was like, hey, can you build me an amp and drop it off on the Village Vanguard and spend a couple of days with me so we can really tweak it? Did you do that? Yeah. Yeah. So, I used to live around the corner from the Village Vanguard. Oh, cool. Dude, great area. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So anyways, so... Um, it, we only got so far over the you know messages and online because he wanted he wanted two different channels that he could play in at the same time and then EQ them and then have those go into the phase inverter. So wow. it was really unique, but he also wanted some very interesting um, tonality, like dips and sweeps. Like he almost wanted like it going with like a. 32 band EQ, like let's try to drop this, let's boost this. He is meticulous. Yeah, that's, I mean, that most artists don't request in that type of detail. Oh, it's it's crazy. So we eventually did it, and it, it turned out great. It, it was a great time. Getting to see him play with that amp live was incredible. Well, I mean, from my short time with this, this is not what I would think a jazz guy would request. No. So he he um, he lives in Germany now. He's got his own studio. And uh, we reconnected, and he said, "Hey, man, um, let's let's do something. Let's. I want to. I, I want a custom amp." I was like, "Okay." And so he said, "Can you build me that version of the Pearl that we did?" But I want a second channel. I was like, oh, "Okay, the second like the other one, like you run them." He's like, "No, no, 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 no." He says, "Just a true dual channel amp." I was like, "Okay, what what do you want it to be?" And it shocked me because he just said, "I want to rock." Which is strange. And you would not... Because the stamp is a rock amp. It, it is insane. It, it, so when you hear like some of Kurt's um, more electric, like high intensity music, 
he does have a fair amount of gain and it's very liquidy. It's not like a hyper compressed, like Greg Howe thing. And I love Greg. He's a friend, right. but like, it's a different type of game. Greg's not a friend of mine. Oh, I, just well, haven't, I just haven't met him yet. He, he's awesome. I like um, but so this is really unique. And so one thing that makes this unique is that um, we've got a distortion and a gain knob and how that works is there are two different preamp circuits and they cascade into each other. So this one controls the first gain stage and this one controls the second. So you can really mix and match and get everything from a light crunch, Mike Campbell stuff, to the more chewy things like David Grissom, to flat out rock, Alice in Chains okay. kind of territory. So if I dimed it all the way out, we're screaming. Put it in drop D and chunk out. Yeah, because I pulled, I pulled it back a bit from what you had it said earlier just to... I pulled this distortion to clean it just a bit, I thought. Yeah. I think it smoothed it out. Of yeah, it's really bit. unique, just kind of having those two to play with. And, yeah, you know, one takes a little bit of the sizzle out, you know, and the top end once it gets to that really peak, you know, saturation. So it's, it's definitely unique. Um, it was essentially based off of our current model, the Anzu, which is a pearl with a really high gain channel. But this is definitely a modified version of that for Kurtz very specific needs. Okay. And is he using this as a working amplifier right now? That... Yeah, he took delivery of it last week. Oh, geez, it's new. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's brand new. Yeah, yeah. So we we uh, we had the prototypes really cool. and then we sent them out, the actual one with the printed face plates and, and everything. That's, so. so, I mean, just jumping again, ship a little bit. Yeah. So the business of being a boutique amp maker. Yeah. Did your family, like, approve this decision? <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I had been teaching and playing out, you know, in clubs and, you know, then I got out of that and was at Mojo. And so they thought it was interesting. And I mean, I started it with a $400 investment. Right. And just a lot of sweat equity yeah. and, and hard work and um, just really trying to put the client first. And you did like, it's just one amp at a time. One amp a at a time. Absolutely. And then it's, it's, you keep it as a small shop still. Yeah, yeah. I mean, our, our infrastructure is pre pretty minimal, um, but our attention to detail and our quality is is insane. No, I've noticed that these are pretty meticulous. Like the craftsman, like the, this cabinet work here alone is pretty spectacular. Yeah, that's Sapili, which is, is awesome and it's finger jointed. And we also have custom maple frames that we can put on there. We've got, you know, custom Tolex options. I've seen some of your weird pieces in there. Yeah, frames. there's like, we had a completely pink cabinet, you know, and it was awesome. Because why not? Why not? With white piping, it was really spectacular. No, but I appreciate the finger joint because we've seen some some pretty big manufacturers come up with amps that they're not doing that, and they're just doing a little cap on the top right there, just to sort of yeah. Just to I hate them. corners. I hate corners. I just don't know why. And and they're charging a premium still for the amplifier. Like these aren't these are not inexpensive amplifiers. Right. Yeah. We're not the highest and we're certainly not the lowest. We're, we're right in the middle. I mean, I remember being a very broke musician and um, I just talked to you over lunch about my Saldano, you know, mm -hmm. how like, in my Marshall, you know, I had to save and save and save to get those, you know? In fact, I even took out a loan to get my Marshall, you know? Isn't that funny? Because that was back in the old days before financing <laughs> was so readily easily. And now we all buy like these guitars and amps on like, you know, $65 a month. Yeah. $35. No, I had to go to the bank. I had to go to the bank and, and I got, I got my Marshall. So. That's the way to do it. But, but I mean, I just, I, I just see some of these companies that are, you know, having really great products, but I think the price tag is a little bit absorbent, you know, There's and excessive. There's some amplifiers out there. And, um, you know, if that's what they want to do, that's cool. I'm not calling anybody out. I mean, I'd try to stay as friendly as I can with all of my peers. You seem to be pretty friendly so far. I haven't, I haven't met, I mean, many nemesis of you. No, no. And uh, I mean, you can try to find a bad review of Port City online and I don't think you'll find That's one. Fine. I just, I, I like to treat everyone, you know, with a, a degree of respect and courtesy. And, you know, if anyone receives something from Port City and they're not in love with it, I, I want to know. And I want to know why. And I want to know how I can resolve it for them. Well, let's say there's somebody out there that wants to start their own boutique amp thing. Would you, first off, would you encourage them? It's sort of like, oh, yes, or this is a bad time. Maybe think about it. Or... Our question two, and it connects to it, what are the steps to doing that? I guess I would have to ask, ask a few more questions to see exactly what the end goal is. If they're just doing this, this in their spare time, you know, like I have friends that build furniture that they sell in the spare time. It's a hobby, right. you know, and that's a totally different thing than saying I'm going to establish a brand and then have that as my prime income. You know, so if you're a hobbyist, absolutely do that. There's tons of kits out there that are really great. 
and you know, buy a kit. And um, Bruce Egnator, amazing guy, kind of the OG of the industry. Yep. Uh, he has these amazing amp classes. So you can I take it. Mojo class. does that too. And Mojo has that as well. Um, so in fact, I know the guy that does it for Mojo, great guy named AJ. Um, so they have classes. There's really great tutorials. Wait, of, is, is, does AJ have, what does he look like? Um, he's kind of a tall guy, dark hair. I think we, we might know AJ too, I can't remember. Okay, yeah, no, he's great. He really knows his stuff. He's awesome. Um, but, you know, I just, uh, there's a lot of really good, Uncle Doug is a really good YouTube channel. Okay. That he goes through like a champ schematic and he kind of lets you know, okay, this is the, this is the, the plate, the grid, the cathode on the preamp tube. Notice how the B plus is here. Here's the rectifier. He breaks down how phase inverters work. So there's just basic ch chunks of knowledge that you can get for free, you know, online. And then also, I know this is old fashioned, dude, but get a library card and get some linear electronic books, you know? Yeah, that's cool. Just, that'd, that'd just fun. read, you know? In fact, I've got some people that work for me and they'll ask me questions. I'm like, it sounds like a really good research project. You know, I'm not your personal Google, so. That is the way to do it. So the business-wise of scaling it, because you, you are, it's a full-time oh, yeah. amp company that's sure. been doing quite well, and you've been since 2008? 2008. 2008, but as we were talking about, we, there were some hiccups, you know, with some health issues within my family that kind of kept me from pursuing it full-time. So really, the past three years have been the only three consistent years that we've done full-time. And we've, in 20 to 20, no, 20 to 21, we doubled our sales. 21 to 22, we nearly doubled our sales. And then we did that again for this year. So we are growing at a pretty rapid rate. Looks, I was telling you before we started doing this was, um, I played one of your, your amps, God, like it had to be like 2009, 10 or something. Mm -hmm. The guitar center was in the pre-owned section. I was like, I thought it was great. And I was asking the guys at the shop, well, whose amp is this? Oh, it's a guy in Wilmington. He makes it like, man, that's all. I didn't buy it because I didn't have the money. Sure. At the time I was, um, well, you stole it. Then that's fine. I, you know? I did. I did pretty much steal an orange rocker bird from there, which is in this room over there. That's fantastic. I, did, I didn't steal it, but I, I got it for like a really good price. Cool. It was like a thousand bucks or something. Oh like, wow, that's fantastic. Yeah, for a rocker bird. Great. Yeah. Go. And then one of my friends in the guitar center on Capitol Boulevard in Raleigh got. No, he got it at a different place. That was where that one's from. But he got a 1968 Marshall Plexi for eight hundred dollars, and they mislabeled it. It was supposed to be eight thousand dollars. And he, he, he walked out, he sold it in the parking lot for $8,000. Just uh, a little bit later on the internet. Man. Welcome to Strange Guitar. See, that's why yeah. you guys still go to guitar shops because we're exactly. all dummies and we make mistakes. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So just the, the, what's most of your time within the boutique amp world spent doing now? All right, well, Is for a while I was, amps? yeah, I mean, I'm still very, very much um, into designing new amps working on the, the current designs that we have, improving them. Um, but a lot of my time is client relations and just hearing what people want, where they're at, and how, how I can help them get from point A to point B with their gear. And I do that That's whether cool. it's my gear or someone else's. I've actually talked people out of my gear and said, you know, for instance, this person wanted this, 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 and I'm like, I could do this, but what you want is already right there. And this guy is really good builder. You need to buy his amp. And so I'll just make a phone call and say, Hey, I'm sending this guy over to you. Take care of him. That's um, awesome. So it's, it's all about the client experience. So, um, that could be, you know, I've had a phone call where literally it's eight minutes and they buy $5,000 worth of gear. Others it's hundreds of emails back and forth over a period of months for one amp. We know that. Um, <laughs> and but it, it's all good. It's all good. It's so part I, of the fun. Yeah, totally. Well, like I think we sort of expressed this before we were doing the video as well. Like it's just we get to work in this amazing fun like industry. And it's like it's about fun. It's not you know we're not curing cancer. We're not yeah. saving lives. We're having if you're not having a good time in the music game, you're you're in the wrong game. Totally. It's a, it's a wrong game. So um. But let me let me expound on that just so I can further answer that, that yes. question in a whole. So in addition to the clients. Um, Acquisition. I was hoping just that was just all you did. You just talked on no, the telephone. No, no, no. Um, obviously, ordering parts is big. Um, keeping track of inventory, accounts receivable, accounts payable, payroll, everything like that. So I do have a, a very small, like skeleton crew, but we are highly efficient at what we do, and everyone is hyper focused on building the best amps possible when they walk through that door. That's awesome. It's um. Do you have an amp that's a favorite right now, or does it kind of? 
Is it always my favorite right now is the one that I, I modded that. for Rhett. Really? Yeah, okay. Because so I've been Rhett, listening Rhett, to a Rhett, lot of Rhett who? Rhett Scholl. Huh. <laughs> you know him? <laughs> Never. He's got a small following somewhere. He's got a YouTube channel somewhere. Yeah. No, he is an amazing guy, great player, but we released the Granville in collaboration with him. Um, he, um, kind of an interesting story, kind of along the si lines of, of working with Kurt for over a decade. Um, so Rhett's first amp was a Port City once he graduated from the Atlanta Institute of Music. Really? Yeah. So Knight Driscoll, who runs and operates uh, Atlanta Institute of Music, he called me. I've known Rhett for a long, long time. And he said, hey, man, I got this guy, Rhett. He just graduated. He doesn't have anything. Will you it, it's in between. <laughs> he wanted to get a Mesa dual rectifier. And Knight was like, talk to Daniel. So he called me and said, would you, as a favor, just take care of this guy? I think he's going to do some big things. I said, sure. So I talked to Rhett, got him uh, uh, hooked up on a Pearl. And That's so really cool. he still got it and he uses it to this day. But anyways, um, we would go back and forth and talk, and, and I always just kind of threw it out there, like, hey, if you ever want to do anything, just let me know. And so um, he's like, I don't know where we would start. I don't have a launching off point. I don't really know what I would want. I said, okay. And it was only till he did a studio session in Germany that he, he called me from Germany. He said, Daniel, I found, I found the amp. It's literally the best sounding amp I've, I've played. What was it? It was a Gibson GA40T. That's awesome. And so he says, could we use that as the platform to do this? Because everyone here in the shop and my little world knows I love the old little five watt Gibsons too. For sure. Yeah, right. all of those amps of that era is great. But the re real thing that's really cool about this is it has all octal preamp sockets. So it's, there's no ECC81s, 82s, or 83s. These are all 6SL7, 6SN7, 6SJ7. It's just such big words for a small mind here. But well, it's I all, understand most of it. It's all octals, and it has a completely unique... Um, just just circuit and uh, so again there are some things that we elevated um i modded mm -hmm. the tremolo circuit so there's fast and slow circuits and then um he wanted tre uh, reverb added so i went ahead and got this from him and so now i've added it reverb and then i'm going to drop it off to him in two weeks so but this is my favorite that's cool that's got a favorite i thought it'd be like this guy right here i've been listening to way too much michael landau and this this gets it that's so, right. Okay, that, yeah. that is fun because that was I couldn't quite put my finger on what that amp was when I was demoing it earlier. I could, it's it's very super sweet. warm and and round and it's just got the perfect amount of compression for me. Um, so I just I love it. it. Inhales pedals too. Okay, what's the best part about being a boutique amp maker? Um, making someone's day. That's it. That's pretty cool. What's, okay, what's the worst part? <laughs> um, the worst part is. Um, there are definitely peaks in sales, you know, like there are months that will do insane amounts of business. I mean, ridiculous. And then there are other months that we will do nearly We're zero. We're not going to make payroll. <laughs> right. And so you've just got to really allocate cash flow evenly and not get ahead of yourself. Like, for instance, when business is great, I'm like, huh, maybe I could get that Jimmy Page Telecaster. And then... I'm glad I didn't. I thought you were going to say the Jimmy Page double neck. No, I hate the, we, double necks. We, we have someone that's going to be getting it, I think. That's okay. one of our well, fans here. That's, it's only $50,000. Oh, sure. So if you're interested, we can get you I'm things good, here. man. I'm, I'm solid. Isn't it funny that the 1971 like replica is $50,000? That's just crazy to me. Yeah, that's, it's wrong. Um, I, think, um, I think this is a good introduction to everyone. So this is Daniel, again, at Port City. Mm-hmm. Amplifiers, yeah, one of our favorite boutique amps out there. It's not just North Carolina; it's a great amp maker. Solid work. They they're gorgeous, and I think that kind of counts for something besides sounding great. I like the thing that looks pretty. Yeah, I mean, obviously, we want kind of a tactile experience where you know I've you know I I didn't grow up with any kind of money at all, and but whenever I would go to a friend's house and they had nice things like you know my friend's dad had a Porsche, you know, and I would just look inside and just you could tell the quality. And so I wanted that leather. kind of experience, you know? And so, um, and even the things that you don't see, like inside this, and we really do treat this as a work of art. We have so much passion, a level of excellence that we put into every single one of our products. And I QC everything before it heads out the door. And I guarantee you, um, you know, you're gonna have a positive experience. Daniel, I like it. That's, um, that's, that's about as good a pitch as I can hear. Cool. It wasn't a pitch, it was just like talking. Yeah, and That's also fun. another one of our features is the lack of features. You know, a lot of a lot of <laughs> amps have bells and whistles and switches, and it's really hard this to has nail a tone. Loop on it. It does have a loop, but I mean, you'll notice the Merino is a tone, 
a volume and a bright switch. The Pearl, treble, mid, bass, volume, bright switch. Mm -hmm. Even these two uh, channels, super This super is pretty simple. simple, but we're, we're not very smart here at Casino, so we appreciate that. Hey man, it I'm, works for us. I'm glad. And the red amp is super simple. So, you know, we really just try to, to stick, you know, Occam's razor, the simplest is often the best. Like the Mesa's are great sound amps. Man, I can't play them. They're too confusing for me. Well, it's one of those things where like, you know, with the Axe Effects or a really intricate amp with a ton of switches, you just go with like, am I really getting the best out of this? And you keep trying and trying and it's like a rabbit hole. And to me, I would just rather have two or three knobs, plug in, get my sound and go. Well, if you're ready to try something different, something new, something from the south port city amps man give it a shot and if, is it cool if i offer all of the people watching a special code yeah all right so um when is this going to be released probably monday or tuesday all right so for the rest of the month of march if you enter the code casino 10 at checkout you will get 10 percent off your entire order holy cow i'm gonna order all of the amps i can order now i'm gonna do all right if you do casino 50 50% off. <laughs> that code is permanently disabled. Because <laughs> I'm a jerk face. I'm going to lose your business. No, that's really awesome, man. Yeah, I appreciate and, that. Um, and also they can sign up for our newsletter. We don't spam. We don't sell your information. I hate all that stuff. But we do send out informative and educational newsletters. We talked about... Um, plate voltage and preamp tubes and just bias and just other things that most guitar players would, would be interested Stay in. Stay tuned for our YouTube channel. We'll have a whole series on plate, <laughs> plate voltage. We I'm, could do that. I'll no. talk plate voltage all day. No, you don't want to do it. Um, and then Daniel and I were sort of scheming about some possible um, things with Casino. We might be so working on something. Just, just stay tuned. It's, um, it's top secret, except for that I just talked about it right now, but whatever. Stay tuned. Hey, Daniel. Thank I'm you very play, much. I'm going to play your amps now. Let's do it. And then, um, that's it. Thanks for joining us. Click like, subscribe, and hit the bell.